Hello everybody, Mike Coley here, and in this live Facebook video, we're going to be talking about platelet-rich plasma injections. Actually, I just had an injection into my knee earlier today, and I want to explain to everyone the whole process that I went through. But first, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mike Kohler. You know, I've been a fitness trainer and gym owner for over 25 years. And if this is the first time watching one of my one of my live videos, and you want to improve your health and fitness along with me, you know, make sure you follow me on my Mike Cola Fitness page on Facebook. Where you know where you're watching it now. And if you know one that may in, in, enjoy this video, make sure you like it and share it with your family and friends. Okay, let's talk about what are platelet-rich plasma injections, and then I'm going to talk about the whole process I went through today in getting these injections in my knee. Okay, platelet-rich plasma injections are pretty much a medical procedure in where a doctor actually takes takes your own blood, spins it in a centrif centrifuge machine, collects the platelets, and then injects it back in your body. And and the pretty much purpose of these are pretty much like orthopedic soft tissue type injuries and potentially even arthritic type injuries too. Like platelets actually create an environment like where the body can kind of heal itself. They're kind of like growth factors. There are some stem cells in these platelet platelets, but when you inject um, platelets into an injured area, you know other stem cells are going to are going to go rush into that area. It just creates an incredible natural healing environment, you know, for the for the entire body. So that's the purpose of doing these PRP injections. For example, it's the exact opposite of a cortisone injection. The cortisone injection. It does get rid of inflammation, but it could potentially do harm to the joint if you get too many of them. I've had that done in my knee as well, too. So let's talk about this this PRP procedure, exactly um, what happened today when I went to the doctor's office and how the whole thing went. So if you're thinking about getting a PRP injection, maybe if you're suffering from some type of tendonitis or like if you have tennis elbow, that works great for that. I've had personal training clients over the years get PRP injections for their elbow and had like really good success with it. You know, other, you know I'm doing it for a couple of different things. Kind of an interesting story of why I'm doing it for many. First of all, uh, were you doing it partly as a diagnostic tool? Because my knee has a couple of different issues with it. I do have a little bit of arthritis, you know, behind the kneecap, but just a moderate amount of arthritis. But I also have some scar tissue from an old operation, an old meniscus operation. And I also was told um, that there's a chance I might have something called plica PLICA syndrome, which is kind of plica, is that fetal flop of skin that people have, you know, some people have, um, some people have it, some people don't have it, and it can kind of get inflamed and stuck, you know, in the knee joint and cause a lot of discomfort and pain. So, my issue um, for these PRP injections that first we went after the um, scar tissue from that meniscus operation I had over 10 years ago and the planca. So, we injected this PRP injection in the joint line to hopefully resolve those issues. It was kind of interesting. Um, the doctor said to me that if I'm 25% better, we know that's the spot. If I get no relief from this injection, then, then potentially maybe my real problem with maybe could be that little bit of arthritis behind the kneecap, so we may go after that. But let's talk about this procedure, okay? I walked into the office. The first thing you have to do is you have to prep your body, like for any type of like... Um, you can almost call it like a pre-surgery prep. Like I had to stop taking all those anti-inflammatory supplements that I take. Like for example, I take fish oil every single day. I do a tablespoon of omega-3 fish oil pretty much every day, but it kind of thins the blood. So he wanted me to stop doing that. I, t I, I take cubicular CoQ10. <laughs> he wanted me to stop taking that. You know, I take a multivitamin with, with, um, uh, with vitamin E in it. That's another blood thin thinner. So I stopped taking that. I, I take turmeric. I eat a lot of turmeric. So I pretty much cut out. I, I felt a little weird not taking all my supplements because I really love taking them. So I cut back on all my supplements. That was my five days before this procedure. I cut back on all those anti-inflammatory type, uh, blood thinning type uh, supplements. So that's phase one. Okay, so I went to the office this morning. You know, he did the procedure around 12 o'clock. The first thing that they did is they, they took up five vials of blood. You know, just about nowhere near like you're donating a pint of blood, nothing like that. I would say maybe maybe 150 amount. They fill up five five vials of blood. You know, they I, I need to want to make sure I'm not dizzy. I felt totally fine. I, I'm really okay with giving blood, you know, things you know things like that. So with things like that. So and then I just pretty much sat in a chair for a half hour. No, I read. Actually, I'm reading. Let me show the book I'm reading. While I was reading a half hour, I love Gary Vee. You know, I'm, I'm reading Gary Vee's book, Crush It. Like, I, as you can tell from this live video, 
you know, I'm trying to increase my, you know, my, my brand as a fitness trainer and, and a gym owner by doing a lot of these videos. And I'd like to really be known as like an expert in the field of fitness, health and nutrition. So, you know, this is a very motivational book. I love the book. Uh, if, if, if you're interested in, in doing the same, I definitely recommend you read all of Gary V's book, follow his podcast, you know, read all his stuff too. Okay. So now at a half hour, I'm reading my book for a half hour while they're spinning my blood in the centrifuge and they're collecting these platelets. Okay. Now after that, um, they take me into an operate. It almost looks like an operating room, you know, but much, but, but much more low key. So it's pretty much me, and then there were um, two techs, uh, like two people assisting the doctor with the injection. But the other thing they wanted to do to make sure the injection the injection was in the right place is that they use a fluoroscope. Now a fluoroscope is kind of like an X ray machine. It's a relatively low radiation machine. I was a little concerned about that because I, I you know. With this knee issue, I really have been having a lot of x-rays of my knee um, over the past year. Even though they're kind of, a, you know, low radiation type things, I'm still a little concerned about my radiation, radiation exposure. Like, for example, I don't even talk on a cell phone. I always keep a cell phone far away from me. Actually, I, was, I, I listened to a podcast with Dr. Merkel talking about he only uses his cell phone with a selfie stick. That's like two or three feet away from him. That may be a little extreme, but hey, you do want to be careful with all these different all these different things. So I do try to really limit my radiation exposure. So I was a little concerned about letting him use this fluoroscope as opposed to giving me the injection blind. But he explained to me that we're only doing one picture. You know, they lead shielded my entire body, you know, covered up all my organs. So only my knee will be exposed to one quick picture. And he really wanted to make sure that he's getting the injection in the right spot. And that's something that I, that I didn't realize because I got a couple of opinions on getting these um, PRP or stem cell type injections. And he was the first doctor that really, you know, made it, it made me realize that it's so important in getting these injections in the exact right area. So first of all, even though this is my second time seeing him and he kind of, you know, kind of had the heads up and where he was going to give the injection, I really palpated and felt for exactly where my pain is. And my pain is in that fat pad on that medial side of the knee, like right below the knee, kneecap on the inside. Medial just means like the inside of the body, not lateral outside. So the fat pad where I have some scar tissue from that meniscus operation and that plica is right on the joint line. And I even with this knee, I even tore my MCL with this knee about 12 years ago, grade two tear, which I always thought could be complicated, the issue with my knee too. So first he marked it nice, you know, with a marker. And the first thing they do is they give you a little shot of that lidocaine, you know, just to numb it up a little bit. But then the second injection kind of hurt, and he and he, he really wanted it to hurt because he wanted me to make sure that he was injecting into my site of pain. And I was in pain when I went in there. Like, you know, actually, I, I was away last week in Florida. And, you know, when I go to Florida, I, I would like to work out a little bit, but I mostly just walk. It's so beautiful. I, you know, coming from New York, it's been a cold, snowy winter. So I walk like for two hours, three days in a row. And that really does aggravate, um, aggravate my knee to do three days of walking like that, you know. So I, I just got back. So my knee really was bothering me today. So it was almost was good because he really was able to isolate exactly where the pain is to give me this PRP injection. So then, then he takes the, you know, it takes a second um, vial of, of, of the platelets and really injects it in there. And actually, it went away. It didn't hurt. The second second one didn't hurt too much, so it really was fine. So they basically, you know, they want to make sure you're not dizzy, obviously, obviously. And then I go in the waiting room, and I sat down for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then, you know, he asked me a whole bunch of questions um, before I left. Pretty much he wanted to give me the whole protocol of what I should do. Obviously, for 48 hours, you got to really take it easy. You don't want to, you know, you know, you, you, you know, you, you don't want, he doesn't want me walking, doesn't want me, you know, really pushing the knee at all. So I'm going to really take it easy for 48 hours. He thinks the maximum benefit from these ejections are anywhere from three to four weeks. So we made an appointment four weeks from now, but he did give me the heads up. And I'm actually, I am in, in pain right now. You just said these platelet rich, uh, platelet rich uh, plasma injections create inflammation. It's almost like the knee's inflamed. That's why, like nowadays, you read, you know, a, a lot of doctors feel that. And also, you know, uh, physical trainers and even myself that it may not be a good idea to take anti-inflammatories right after you hurt yourself anymore because you want that inflammation. Okay, there's a lot of healing agents like that, like platelets in the inflammation. So if you're going to take Advil Relief like naproxen or ibuprofen, even though it may temporarily relieve your pain, it can actually slow down the healing process. So when you're thinking in a way... These platelet-rich plasma injections really create some inflammation, but also create, also have those growth factors that are going to make your body send stem cells to the air and just going to hopefully heal 
ligaments, tendons, and hopefully even potentially even help with um, some cartilage, you know, some cartilage repair too. Okay, so that's the protocol. You know, I'm going to see him again in a month. I could be in more discomfort for the first like two or three days after the injection. But he said by, you know, by uh, Saturday, I'm going to probably take a one hour walk. And he said by Monday, I'm going to slowly start doing my normal, you know, fitness routine. I'm going to do like a real easy, um, leg workout on Monday. You know, I'll, I'll train my upper body Tuesday and probably do a, do like, you know, maybe elliptical or something like that on Wednesday. I'm going to just ease back into it. Okay. And hopefully, um, you know, hopefully I'll start feeling a little bit better in a couple of weeks. He wants me to call him as soon as he feels that I do have some improvement. I guess it's going to be another diagnostic tool, how quickly I feel better. So if I feel better in four, five, six days, I'll ring him up and tell him that I'm definitely feeling better. And hopefully these injections, um, these injections are going to help. And then we get max benefit in four weeks. Okay, so this is what we do four weeks from now. Like, let's say that, and I hope this is the case, that I'm 25, 30, 40% better from this one injection. Okay, that tells us, first of all, that he injected these P the PRP in the right spot. So my issue really is not the arthritis, that moderate to mild arthritis I have behind my kneecap, but it really is the scar tissue or the uh, plica, or the plica syndrome. So then step two is gonna be, either we can do another PRP injection, okay? I think research has shown that up upwards of three um, PRP injections produce the best benefit, or we can actually go even have more heavy duty, which I would love to do. Unfortunately, it's somewhat costly. We'll talk about the cost of these injections towards the end of the video too. Um, we could mix this PRP injections with stem cells. Like for example, um, he likes to mix them with umbilical uh, cord um, stem cells. So pretty much the umbilical cords are also, I think he said something like 30 million stem, you know, you really concentrate the stem cells your cocktail, you mix, you mix it with PRP, and he's getting incredible results with it. And I've done a lot of research on this. I'll be doing some more videos about stem cells and PRP. I actually, I came across a lot of this from listening to a guy like Joe Rogan, you know, that great podcast he has. I love his podcast. Um, he's had a similar thing. He had placenta tissue with PRP, I think, in his um, knee, and I think also in his shoulder. He was a doctor in um, in Las Vegas. Um, you know, I follow Ben Greenfield. I love his podcast, too. He's always talking about stem cells and he had a lot of people on who, um, you know, who doctors that deal with these stem cells. I think, really think there's a lot of potential in, in potentially growing back um, cartilage with these stem cell injections. So that that's going to be my option. So if, if, if I'm 25 to 30% better, I'm probably going to do a combination of stem cell with the PRP. Now, for example, unfortunately, if I'm not better, then it's a matter, okay, what do we do now? Now do, do I do a PRP injection? behind the uh, patella, behind the kneecap to see if that's my issue. That's probably what I'm going to do. The issue also comes out that, that these procedures are not covered by insurance. Okay, like I paid $700 for this procedure. You know, other people charge even more. Some people, I've heard numbers like twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 for a procedure. You know, anywhere I think from that five to 1500 per injection is pretty much a standard going rate in the New York area. I got these injections in New Jersey. I don't want to say who the, who the doctor's name is. I want to run it by him first. But if you want to know, you can just send me a, um, a personal message and I'll have to let you know who the doctor is. I really liked them. Loved the office. They were really nice. Very professional. Everything about it, I think, really, really well. But when it comes to doing the stem cells, like the umbilical cord stem cell with the PRP, then we're talking about numbers of like $2,500 or more. You know, so it can really get up there. And there's other options that go too with the stem cells. Some people use um, some cutaneous body fat and mix that with PRP. Instead of using umbilical cord, some people use bone marrow from the ilium from your pelvis and mix that with PRP for the stem cells. So there are some other options to go. Like Joe Rogan had Mel Gibson on his podcast I listened to a couple of weeks ago. Who, um, you know, they went to Panama where they can do things that you can't do in New York. Actually, they, they can harvest these stem cells. So they, for example, I think they like to use, um, bone marrow or they harvest it or they, or they use like, umbilical core. You know, they do, it's a little bit of a more complicated process, but they're getting incredible results. Mel Gibson told the story. He had torn labrums and arthritis in both shoulders. He had a couple of injections. His shoulders feel incredible. His dad was like in his 90s, couldn't walk, was, was wheelchair bound, had these stem cell PRP injections um, in, in his hips, was walking in a matter of days afterwards. But they also do things where we can't do in the U.S. They inject those stem cells directly IV, like directly into, into your bloodstream which is really in incredible. And plus, you know, these stem cells are, are have other incredible good me medical, um, you know, you know, medical uses like for Parkinson's, for MS, for, you know, for, you know, so many different issues. That's, you know, there's so much, um, 
so many more studies have to be done. There's a lot of potential with these stem cells. Okay, well, you know, actually, I hope if anyone's out there, you have any questions about PRP, you know, you can ask them now. I don't know if anyone's alive out there watching this video, you know, you can pop me a question. Now, hopefully, I'll see it in the in the comment section. You know, if you're thinking about getting PRP injections, um, you know, let me know. Maybe I can help you if you want to just, you know, talk about it a little, on a little more personal level. You can DM, you know, give me a personal message. I'll take exactly in my experiences besides this video. And if you've had PRP injections and it's worked for you, I'd love to hear about it. You know, leave some comments below. Also, if you've had um, stem cells, I really would love to hear if you have any type of stem cell injection, had a good or bad result. You know, I want to hear the good and the bad. You know, if you've had these PRP injections and you felt like they, it was a lot of money and did nothing for you, you know, I want to hear about that too. You know, we're all, you know, we're all looking to feel and, and feel better and, and improve our health. And, and what I do like about these injections, though, it's so, so much less invasive than actually getting surgery. You know, I had that meniscus operation 10 years ago. I had, I, I was never happy with the result. I felt my knee was actually um, worse from the operation. I never should, in hindsight, you know, my knee wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I probably never should have had it. And a lot of new research is showing that, too, that these meniscus, when they remove tissue, reduce part, remove part of the meniscus, it seems like five, six years later, it makes no difference whether you did or didn't have the operation. The knees are actually the same. My knee was actually worse from it. But the intent of my operation initially was to repair the meniscus, but unfortunately, it was in a bad spot. It was a, a posterior medial tear. Like, it, it was the back part of my meniscus, and it was a, ply, a spot where the blood supply was so, so low that um it just couldn't heal. They felt the surgeon felt that they um stitched up. And and that's and that's why these platelet rich plasma injections work. Just think. You know, they're injecting injecting these platelets, you know, this blood into areas where the blood supply is very, very low. You know, that's so that's the these healing agents, the healing agents are in the blood, you know, so you'll want the blood to get to these spots. Okay. I don't want to ramble on here. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Um, you know, let me hear from you if if if, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and you know, once again if you're looking to improve your health and fitness and you want to take this journey along with me, you know, follow me on um, on my Facebook page, My Color Fitness. I plan on doing a lot more live videos like this, and I want a lot of participation. Also, check out my YouTube channel, My Cola. You know, I do I do a lot of videos on YouTube, too, on all different topics on health, fitness, and nutrition. Okay, take care, everyone. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day.